In 1996, Nintendo released a 64-bit gaming console. It's funny to me that a console nearing 25 years in age still holds its own today. This cartridge system is one of my fondest memories as a kid, and beyond shaping my childhood with games like Tony Hawk Pro Skater, it also solidified my love for first-person shooters with the release of GoldenEye 007. While you're about to see my console is the most common in appearance as a charcoal gray unit, Nintendo 64 actually came in a variety of colors, totaling 19 different variants. The console also had 296 N64 games to choose from in total, not including variant cartridges or not for resale cartridges. But in those 296 cartridges, there are a few that every man-child like myself can hold and stare upon with overflowing nostalgia until they become old and gray. So to kick this video off right, let's play a few games as we talk about the console, after I unbox this mystery package. This is actually the Camway Converter Adapter for the N64 to HDMI. A necessary accessory if you ever want to plan a live stream on your N64 or record gameplay from it. In the box you'll find an HDMI cable along with a micro USB to plug in your N64 to HDMI converter. There's also some paperwork showing you how the device works and where to plug it in on the back of your TV and in the back of the console. Lastly, we'll take a look at the converter itself. While in my opinion the cord that runs from the converter to the unit is fairly short, it does have an option to output in 1080p or 720. The two ports are your power port with a micro USB and an HDMI out. On the back of the N64 you can see a slot for the multi-out. It's the same one that was used for the SNES and the GameCube. And this fairly large cutout for the monster of a power supply that this console has. Funny enough, as I get older, I now appreciate a little bit more of this design. The power supply tucks itself right into the rear of the console, so you're not dealing with excess wires or a separate power supply. I think it's important that we touch on the bottom of this console, and chances are you never used this port growing up, but there's something under there called an extension port. That's because this port's primary function was to connect a disk-based system called the N64DD, or the disk drive. These systems are fairly rare and were mostly used in Japan. The top of the N64 has a power toggle, a reset button, and this port cover where inside you'll find a removable memory pack. The one I have here with the red top is called an expansion pack, but the original units all were stocked with a jumper pack. Essentially this is RAM. The expansion pack doubled the RAM to 4 megs. This port in the expansion was actually created for that earlier mentioned 64DD. And strangely enough, this expensive little addition doesn't do much for non-compatible games. Without getting too much into it, this little pack added better visual textures to certain games, but at the cost of lost frame rates. But that's a totally different cup of tea for a different video. Fun fact, although you might have done this in your adolescence, it's actually not good for your cartridges. Blowing hot air with a mix of spittle into a cartridge contacts can actually over time cause rust on those metal surfaces. So don't do it unless you hate your childhood. Now let's jump into the elephant in the room, this monstrosity the N64 controller. As a kid, I never knew how bad it was, but today it's such a clunky, ugly, hard to maneuver thing. It's not ergonomic and its placements just feel off. Playing games on it doesn't feel natural and the relearning curve to using buttons as a D-pad or the other thumbstick is just awkward. I can appreciate the colors though. Purple was always my favorite growing up. While we're obviously used to high definition games, some of the graphics in games like 007 don't seem to play as good as I remember them being when I was younger, but the sounds and the feel of the controller help. As a console, the N64 is one of my favorites. It's versatile for quality single player games and is great for a party. Today in 2020, you can buy a system with some games and maybe a controller or two for around 100 bucks or a little less. If you're like me and you grew up in the 90s, then this hunk of plastic is guaranteed to bring a smile to your face. If you guys like this video and you like the idea of a vintage tech review format, be sure to leave me a comment below and while you're at it, hit subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss any future videos. And while you're at it, watch another one. I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.